I'm Tara Lynn Wagner, and welcome to this week's Facebook Live event. I'm at Reproductive Medicine Associates of New Jersey's West Orange office, and I'm very excited this week to be joined by Dr. Marcy McGuire. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us. It's a pleasure to be here. So every week we're going to be bringing you one of these Facebook Live conversations on Wednesday afternoon, and today we're going to be talking about a topic that really dominated the conversation a lot last year, which was the Zika virus. A lot of concerns among pregnant women and women looking to become pregnant because the Zika virus was found to possibly cause some, some very serious birth defects uh, if it is contracted during pregnancy or even prior to conception. So Dr. McGuire and I are going to be talking a little bit about where things stand this year, how the Zika virus uh, is spread, what women can do to protect themselves, and also just a little bit about, since it is the summer season right now, what pregnant women can do in terms of having a healthy pregnancy during warm weather, also during travel. So we'll get to all of that. But first, I have to read a small legal disclaimer, so bear with me. The information provided on this Facebook Live video, rmanj.com, and any other Reproductive Medicine Associates of New Jersey-owned material is provided as an information resource only. It is not to be used for any diagnostic or treatment purpose, nor does the information provided create any patient-physician relationship. RMANJ expressly disclaims responsibility for any damages, loss, injury, or liability whatsoever suffered as a result of your reliance on the information provided. All right, so that's out of the way, Dr. McGuire. And, and I would like to, before we get to uh, my questions, I want to invite you who are watching to submit your own questions or also just make some comments on our Facebook page. I will pose your questions to Dr. McGuire. But let me start with a question of my own. And as I mentioned, mm -hmm. Zika was really in the headlines a lot last year. So where do things stand right now? Is this something that women who are pregnant or thinking about getting pregnant should still be concerned about? Absolutely. Zika virus is still a very real and big threat for women who are pregnant or are planning pregnancy. Um, while the effects of Zika infection in adults is relatively mild, in infants and um, newborns it can create really devastating neurologic disorders, um, including microcephaly, which everybody has heard about in the news. Um, the CDC website is a great um, place to consult to see areas that are still at risk, um, but broadly the um, Caribbean, Central and South America, and also Florida and Texas have been areas that remain at risk. So that means what? That we should, that women who are pregnant or thinking about becoming pregnant should avoid traveling to those areas? Yes, ideally that would be the case. Um, um, to, the, the best way to avoid Zika virus infection is to avoid getting bitten by the mosquitoes that transmit the virus. And so that would mean if you're thinking about becoming pregnant, how far in advance are we talking? Like if, I'm, if I had travel plans or I just traveled, how long should I wait before trying to conceive? So that's a great question. Um, Zika virus can live in the blood for about two months and it can live in the sperm or semen for about six months. So that um, is the gauge we use to con um, counsel patients on timing for conception. So if a woman were to travel, let's say, to the Caribbean on vacation, um, she would want to wait two months upon her return to the U.S. before attempting unprotected intercourse. If her partner, though, had traveled with her to the Caribbean and come back, we would advise against attempting conception for a full six months because the Zika can last longer in sperm than it can in blood. And I think that that is something that a lot of people might not have realized. Um, it, it did get some coverage last year, but mm -hmm. I think the common concern is the mosquito bites. Right. But people might not realize that even if, even if I, as the woman, stay put, if my partner traveled, um, I could still be at risk. Right, absolutely. Zika virus not only is uh, transmitted by a mosquito bite, it can also be sexually transmitted. So and that includes oral, anal, or vaginal intercourse. So, um, you know, all these should be avoided till the full six months. I have some numbers on this, actually, that I thought were interesting. So in 2016, there were over 5,000 symptomatic Zika virus disease cases reported in the U.S. This is according to the CDC. And 180 of those cases were here in New Jersey. So far in 2017, only 140 symptomatic Zika virus disease cases have been reported in the U.S. and only two in New Jersey. Why do you think that is? Is it that we are seeing um, the prevalence of this disease just sort of run its course and wane a little bit? Or is it part of the awareness campaign that really took place last year? So it's probably a little bit of both. Um, I think people that are planning pregnancy or are pregnant are avoiding travel to the Caribbean and those sorts of areas. Um, in addition to that, you know, the, the virus is transmitted by a mosquito and mosquitoes wax and wane 
um, with seasonality. So mm -hmm. uh, we just went through winter, um, not necessarily the coldest winter ever, but um, you know the mosquito population may have been affected by that, and that would have um, implications for um, Zika virus prevalence at this point. Another important, I think, point to make um, in that in those statistics is that only one in five people who are infected with Zika actually display symptoms. So if there were only two people in New Jersey who had Symptomatic. Um, symptoms, <coughs> there would be another uh, potentially eight that would be asymptomatic yet could still have a baby affected with microcephaly, et cetera. All right, so that's an important point too mm -hmm. because you may have been exposed mm -hmm. but not showing these, uh, well, what are the, the symptoms that you would be exhibiting if you were exhibiting them? Sure, yeah, so again, only one in five people will have these symptoms um, and they're like the flu, um, low-grade temperature, low-grade fever, a um, rash on the skin, conjunctivitis, which is like red eyes, um, uh, and some arthralgias or pains in the hands and feet. Um, but again, most people are asymptomatic. And if, if it is the case where it was the partner who contracted Zika and uh, it is being spread through the sperm, mm -hmm. is that something that then the woman would show signs or is that something you wouldn't even know about because it's really just affecting the fetus? Um, so the woman might show signs, but it would be, again, the symptoms consistent with kind of a flu-like mild illness that should go away in two to seven days. She, and all, she would only display those symptoms one in five cases. So let's look at some of what we know about Zika and some of what we don't know. Mm -hmm. Where, what do we know in terms of how, if, if I am bitten by a Zika carrying mosquito, am I definitely going to have these symptoms? Will there definitely be a birth defect then to the child that I'm carrying? So that's actually a really complicated question and um, this outbreak is relatively recent. It started in 2015 and the full implications of the disease are still being discovered. We know actually only about one to four percent of symptomatic patients with diagnosed Zika virus infection in pregnancy give birth to a baby with microcephaly, but that's likely the tip of the iceberg. So they, this virus just has an affinity for neurons, the cells in brains that help us think and act and everything else. And there um, obviously is a great deal of de development in the brain and in neurons in utero and also in the first um, years postnatally, post-delivery. Um, and the full implications of this disease are not yet known. So in addition to smaller heads or microcephaly, there are probably issues related to hearing and vision um, and delayed mentation, you know, even if the head size is normal. So those things might not even manifest themselves for another year or two. Right, or, or more. Or yeah. more. Um, what about if, um, is, is there a time in the pregnancy where you're less likely to be affected if you were to, to be infected by Zika? Right, great question too. So the first trimester is the most at risk. Um, so a, a pregnant woman in her first trimester of pregnancy, um, you know, up until about 12 weeks gestation, contracts a Zika virus, she has the highest risk that her fetus would be affected and have microcephaly and all the other repercussions. Women infected in the second and third trimesters of pregnancy can also transmit that virus to their fetus and the fetus is still at risk, but at slightly lower risk than um, uh, women infected in the first trimester. And what about the preconception period? So um, that's, a, you know, that's a harder um, number to, to grab onto. We know that Zika virus, again, can live in the blood for about two months, um, but the symptoms will only last for two to seven days. We can detect Zika virus RNA for about two weeks in the blood, so it, it becomes very complicated, um, not only to make an accurate diagnosis, but also to, to definitely say that certain symptoms are related to Zika virus infection and not relative to another kind of viral infection. So is some sort of screening done for pregnant women um, who think they may have been exposed? Um, so yes, if there's been a risk of exposure, there are both blood and urine tests available for Zika virus. A negative test does not necessarily mean that you have not been infected. So if a pregnant woman has, a, there's a suggestion or a strong suggestion that she may have been exposed, she will be followed with serial ultrasound, particularly focusing on the baby's brain and head to make sure that appropriate milestones are uh, achieved. But uh, unfortunately, even if it looks like the baby's head circumference is falling off of the chart, 
it's not, there's nothing really that can be done other than monitoring and symptomatic treatment. Is there any vaccine? There is no vaccine, unfortunately, for Zika. Yeah. So are, are pregnant women generally tested for this, or is it just something where if you, if you feel like you may have been exposed, if you have good reason to believe, then you can go ahead and get tested? Right, great question. So um, aside from people who have been potentially exposed or believe they have symptoms, it's not recommended to test the general population, um, in part because the diagnostic test is not, that, is not perfect. Um, and they don't want to. They don't want patients to misinterpret a negative result. So obviously, the women who come here uh, to the facility are very interested in becoming pregnant. Um, is there are there any guidelines that you give them where you say don't travel within this time period, or you know you might want to wait a couple of months because X Y Z? Right. Absolutely. So um, we would recommend that a woman wait two months upon return from an at risk area prior to attempting conception, and then hopefully we have access to a partner's sperm either before he traveled um, to that affected area or through some other way. Um, if the couple just has to go to uh, the area that's affected, for example, if the partner or the patient regularly flies to the Caribbean or Central South America for work, um, then we can you know, in, um, do a physical exam looking for s signs and symptoms of Zika. We can test the blood for um, evidence of prior Zika infection. Um, and then we can move forward with treatment, although it's best to um, avoid travel at all. If a patient is um, in the Caribbean, you know, there are general um, kind of guidelines that she can follow to avoid being bitten by a mosquito, you know, wearing long sleeve sh uh, shirts and long pants, um, trying to stay inside instead of outside, using DEET containing repellents or permethrin on the clothing. Um, just to minimize the chance of getting bitten. But better off to not Better off to, to not, not go. go. <laughs> um, what about if you're looking for donor sperm? Mm -hmm. are, the, are the donors screened for, the, or are they asked these types of questions before they make their donation, or is it just you know, not even something that comes up? So that's a great question and something that somebody actually asked me about very recently. Um, so I had called a bunch of different Bank, sperm banks to investigate it, and it, you know, every bank is a little bit different, so um, patients would be best advised to contact the bank that they plan to use to see what their screening protocol is. But generally, there's FDA um, guidelines that, that request that banks would inquire about prior travel in their donors and exclude them from donating if they've been to an at-risk area within the last six months. So in addition to Zika, um, are there any other potential diseases that women who are looking to conceive or who are in the early stages of their pregnancy should be concerned about in the summer? In the summer particularly. Time especially. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a good question. I think you know there are certain diseases like CMV, cytomegalovirus, virus, which is not particular to the summer, but that would be a disease that people potentially could be at risk for. Um, varicella or chicken pox is mm -hmm. can, that can um, you know, again, while it's a relatively mild in adults and in children, in pregnant women can be much more severe. Rubella, um, measles, mumps, rubella, that, so we check for that vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and of course the se sexually transmitted diseases, hepatitis and that kind of thing too. But we do all the screening for that um, in patients who come here to make sure that they haven't been exposed and that if they've had a vaccine that they are immune. So when it comes to the, the travel restrictions that we talked about, all of that can be found on the CDC's website, and I'm sure you have links to, to that as well. Um, are there any other things that women should be aware of as they're traveling anywhere um, in the either early stages of their pregnancy or if they're looking to, to get pregnant in the near future? Um, so if we're traveling outside of the U.S., there are general uh, travel recommendations, and a lot of patients will see um, uh, an infectious disease doctor if they're planning to travel where there might be malaria or that kind of thing. Um, I, there aren't any, besides the Zika virus, there's no other special precautions um, that I'm aware of uh, for patients traveling internationally. So even if you're traveling to some tropical location that's not necessarily on the CDC's website, <laughs> um, you, should be, you should be okay with just the regular precautions? The regular precautions should be fine, but again, if you're planning to travel somewhere um, you know, out of the ordinary. I would definitely see an infectious disease physician first. They could give you some um, medication and other things to avoid contracting, you know, malaria or some other 
diseases you don't want to get. <laughs> yeah. And of course, summertime, people yeah. do a lot of things. It's, you're outdoors a lot. There's a lot of activities happening. It can be very hot. Mm -hmm. So what can women, pregnant women do just to keep themselves generally healthy mm -hmm. during the summer season? Um, so hydration is key, particularly, particularly in the first trimester when there's a lot of nausea and vomiting, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so it's easy to become dehydrated at that time. Um, you know, stay in the air conditioning, avoiding um, mosquitoes in New Jersey too, you know, is, is recommended. Um, Just out of precaution? Or? As, a pre as a precaution mm -hmm. to, um, you know, um, there, are other vi there are other infections that can be sure. born with mosquito bites too. Um, and protecting themselves using DEET is okay for yes. a pregnant woman. That is a safe product yes, to use. for sure. <laughs> Anything else? Um, on the clothing, you can use permethrin. Which, um, which, which is, is another anti-mosquito, um, you know, repellent. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else that people need to be aware of when it comes to um, Zika precautions? Mm -hmm. is, is this time of year or really at any point? Um, so Zika virus can be transmitted from sexual contact, mosquito bites, um, uh, and, sorry, <laughs> mosquito bites, um, blood transfusion, um, sexual contact, um, organ donation, that kind of thing, Sper sperm donation, egg donation. So if, if uh, the patient is considering using any of those products, that would be you know, um, useful to look into the background of where the donated uh, mm -hmm. items came from. You know, I'm getting a question here yeah. from a viewer named Josh who wants to know about Lyme disease, which yeah. um, in our area in the Northeast can be, uh, is, a, is a concern for people of all ages, but what if you contract Lyme disease or there's ticks uh, yeah. when, when you are pregnant? Absolutely. So if New Jersey in particular is an at-risk area, um, and the t this ticks seem to be more prevalent this year, for better or for worse. Mm. So um, the same precautions that anybody would use to avoid getting Lyme disease, and if you know somebody notes a, a tick on their skin, particularly if it has that bullseye characteristic rash, they should go to their primary care and get some antibiotics potentially to treat the Lyme disease. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there isn't a greater risk in pregnancy versus outside of pregnancy for that disorder, but definitely worth a close follow-up. Is, is that mostly though, uh, the symptoms would be mostly felt by the woman, it would not pass on to the, the baby? baby? So I'm not entirely sure if there would be um, uh, different repercussions for the baby as for the um, parent, but um, uh, I could look into it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us to talk about this topic. It's, a, I'm sure, on a lot of people's minds. I remember having friends last year who were going through uh, pregnancies who were very, very concerned. And so I'm sure that is still a concern on a lot of people's minds. So thanks for spreading sure. some light on that. And of course, if you want to find out any information about uh, the Zika virus and the restrictions, um, you can go to the CDC's website. If you'd like to find out any information about Reproductive Medicine Associates of New Jersey, you can go to their website, which is RMA nj.com and of course like us on Facebook and you'll be able to check into these Facebook live events that we will be doing every Wednesday right here at noon. So thank you so much Dr. McGuire. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. All right, and we'll see you next week.